everyone, Christy Van Pay here, accountant and QuickBooks Pro Advisor. And today I'm going to show you um, how to manage your list. QuickBooks Online has decided to start implementing limits on the size of lists that you can have within your accounting software. And so you may find yourself wondering uh, what's going to happen if you don't get that list pared down or how can you pare, that, pare down your list or maybe just over time you know, you might not even be close to your limit, but over time you've started to notice that you have multiple vendors that are actually the same vendor, or you have several accounts in your chart of accounts that mean the same thing and really should be combined. And um, maybe you have some customers too that, you know, one time they were put in with their whole first name and the next time they were put in with just, you know, a, an abbreviated version, Patricia versus Pat or something like that. And you just want to merge those together so that everything is under one record. So I'm going to show you today how you can do that using um, the merge feature in QuickBooks Online. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do is for today's video, we're just going to we're going to merge these two. We're going to pretend that these are the same vendor and we want to merge them together as one. So before I actually do the merge, I want to take a screenshot of the information that is on each um, vendor record. So I'm going to click edit here so that I can see all the information that I have for this vendor. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I'm just going to, you know, paste it in a Word document or put it somewhere that I can refer back to it after the merge because you do tend to sometimes lose information when you merge um, vendor or customer records. So then, then you can take, you know, your screenshot and complete the information that somehow got wiped out in the transition. However, you will not lose any transactions. All of the transactions will mer merge together and now be under the one vendor contact, which is very nice. So I've actually already done this and put it onto a Word document. So I have both of my vendors information here, which I will refer back to when we're done. And I'm going to come back in here. And in order to do the merge, you have to select one or the other, whichever one um, whichever one has the name you want to use. So I want to use Hall Properties. So I'm going to change Hall's hardware to Hall Properties. So to do that, I'm going to open, um, click on that vendor and then click edit to open the vendor record. And I want to change it in the display name as field. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to make sure you, you have to type the name in that you're changing it to exactly the same. So I'm just verifying here that it is Hall Properties. I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to change this to all properties. And then I'm going to save the record. And it's going to tell me that name is already being used. Do you want to merge the two? And I'm going to say yes. And then I am going to refresh my screen. And you'll see there are that Hall's hardware is now deleted. And if I look at Hall properties, all the transactions that were under Hall's hardware are now under here. Um, if I go back to my vendor list, only Hall properties will show up here because I'm not showing any inactive vendors. But if I were to use the gear wheel over here and say include inactive, then I would see that Hall's hardware pop back up, but showing that it was deleted. So normally by default, this is this is clicked off so that the inactive are not included. And then you're just going to have Hall properties. So that's how you merge a vendor record. And it works the same way for a customer record. So now I'm going to go into Hall properties. And I'm going to look at their vendor record and I'm going to just match it up to what I had before to see if any changes need to be made. So you would just refer back to this. And if there's anything missing that you wanted to have in there, you would just go ahead and add that. So that pretty much completes the process for merging a vendor or a customer. They work the same. Um, now, if they, you have some chart of accounts that you feel are like I've had sometimes I've seen where people are trying to break out their expenses by, I don't know, different areas, for instance, a parish and a school. And so they might have, um, 
they might have payroll expense, parish and payroll expense school, but then, and this is a bad example because they'd probably never want those to be together, but just for the sake of example, let's just say they, they found that they're always misclassifying one or the other because they just, they look under payroll expenses and they pick whichever one pops up and then it ends up being the wrong one. And so they just want to combine those into, into one payroll expenses account. So if we go to our chart of accounts, which we can get to either through the gear wheel here, chart of accounts, or over here under accounting, we can get to our chart of accounts here. And then we have our list of all of our categories that we put our expenses and income and stuff into. And I'm just going to pick something, I don't know. Um, Okay, I see here there's a promotional, and then let's see if there's like an advertising. Yes, and an advertising. That's a perfect example of when you would probably want to combine those two. Um, you know, in my mind, and for some people, there is a, a valid reason for them to have it separated out, and they know exactly what they're doing, and they keep those separated very nicely. But for most people, that's just, they're too close to one another, so you might find that one one time you're putting it to promotional and the next time you're putting it to advertising and there's no consistency in what you're doing. So this is a perfect example of one that you might want to um, match to the other. So there's a couple of important things that you need to know before you can merge accounts. One of those is that they have to have the same type. So you can't, um, you can't merge an income account and an expense account or something like that. Um, you can't merge a long-term asset or a fixed asset with a other current asset or something like that because they're two different types and so that's not going to work so you want to verify that they're both expenses so i have advertising here and i have promotional down here and they're both expenses the next thing that you want to confirm so i'm going to click over here to edit this one in particular is that the detailed type is the same so this is advertising promotional and if I go, um, and it tells you here in this column, so advertising promotional, and then I'm gonna come up here to advertising, and that's also advertising promotional. So I can merge these two. Now, if you wanted to, um, if, you, if they're different and you wanted to merge them, then you would simply just go into the record, <clears throat> change the type and or the detail type to whatever you need it to be to match, save and close, and then go and do the merge after you've saved and closed. So, um, but we don't need to do that in this case. So I want the promotional to merge with advertising. So this is the one I wanna change the name and I need to change it to match exactly the same as the other account. So I need to change this to be advertising. And you do that over here in the name section. And it's going to say, this name is already being used. Would you like to merge the two? And you're going to say yes. And then once you do that, all of the transactions that were under promotional are now combined with the transactions that were under advertising. <laughs> so here we have our advertising. And if we look down here, we no longer have um, promotional anywhere because it's been merged. So that's how you can um, get rid of duplicates and uh, kind of slim things down. And hopefully you found this video helpful. And I look forward to sharing more helpful tips with you. Thank you.